Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. A few days ago, I watched a quite unsettling video by a guy called David Voas on YouTube, a TEDx talk entitled Why There Is No Way Back for Religion in the West. And uh, I don't know if you had a, an axe to grind or an ideology that was a kind of... Uh, slanting the way he was interpreting the facts but you couldn't get away from the fact that as a social scientist he had some pretty hard data that he was basing his opinions on and and, uh, and that all the graphs were kind of uh, looking quite discouraging in terms of church attendance and religious affiliation and interest in religion and so on in the UK in Australasia in Europe and and even in America and uh, it made for unsettling and disturbing viewing for somebody who's who's uh, in that context and looking to reach out to people um, and the problem is we can get quite discouraged, we can get into a negative thought spiral and, and that starts seeping out in terms of a kind of an anxiety and a desperation, uh, which is really quite unattractive in our evangelism and, and our mission. We're saying, please believe, please. Um, and that just compounds the discouragement as well. Uh, and so I was encouraged when uh, I read uh, yesterday's one year Bible um, uh, passage uh, in 1 Kings 19, a story of Elijah. Now, I often think of Elijah in the Elijah's period as being a kind of a golden era uh, or one of the golden eras in um, Israel's history. And yet Elijah didn't see it that way. Um, he has this kind of breakdown in the middle of it all uh, and limps off to the Mount, to Mount Sinai and God says what are you doing here and Elijah says I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too and, uh, and God reveals himself to him uh, in a still small voice and, uh, and asks him the same question again and, and Elijah repeats the exact same answer he's just given which gives you a uh, kind of an impression that he's got this uh, narrative on auto replay and uh, he's basically just gone into this tailspin of despair really and he's gone into suicide mode even and sometimes uh, that's really the, the pattern that we can fall into as well but God speaks to Elijah and he says hang on that's not the, the truth that's not the whole truth at least you've left me out of the equation and you've also not realized that there are 7,000 people in Israel whom I know who have not bowed the knee to Baal um, or kissed him and, uh, and and I also want you to play a part in anointing the next generation of leaders um, the king of Aram and Israel and and a successor for yourself Elisha and so um, in the same way we need to be encouraged that actually God can turn things around on a two penny piece if he wants to that we shouldn't leave God the living and the powerful God out of our equations or formulas no matter how many TEDx talk people might uh, try to make us think uh, otherwise actually God can I can turn things around and there have been more than one occasion in Israel's history and in the history of God's people where things have looked a little bleak but sometimes God delights in those circumstances because he can show that it's it's through his strength and his power alone uh, and not human might that his church and his good news will be vindicated again and again and so be encouraged today don't live defeated or despairingly live hopefully because God is in control.